This video is sponsored by Blue Apron. The first 100 people to sign up with the link below get their first box for free, and I'll tell you more about it after the video. Hey everybody, I'm Peanut Butter Gamer, and welcome to the fifth installment of the Goodwill Games series. Wow, everyone's so impressed with my abilities to make videos in a reasonably efficient and sufficient manner. Yeah. Thank you, thank you everybody. You flatter me too much. <laughs> Subscribe. Oh, uh, <laughs> just ignore that. That's not supposed to be there. <laughs> Do it! Seeing as Goodwill Games has always been a show where I try to save you, my precious viewer, as well as myself, I guess, some hard-earned cash by showing off some cheap, obscure, and often weird thrift store games that nobody else wanted. I mean, good games. Always good games, of course. I decided to celebrate this milestone by showing off some other thrift store things that I found while looking for these games. So let's do it. Item number one, teacup. You just pour the water into the cup and... Perfect. Mm, gotta close the little hole up there. And great! And item number two? I didn't find it, anything else. There's nothing good at the thrift stores. Except this, of course. Well, let's move on to the games now. Up first, I found this Sesame Street game, Sesame Street, The Adventures of Elmo and Grouchland. I have very few early childhood memories. Most of them involve some sort of self-inflicted injury. I'm sure you're all surprised to hear that. But some of the ones that aren't self-inflicted injury related involve me watching Sesame Street on public television. I know at the very least on this channel I've talked before about the Martians on Sesame Street and how I was terrified of them at a young age. But I also really loved Elmo. In fact, even to this day, he remains one of my favorite childhood TV characters. No, 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 Arthur. I said one of my favorite characters. You're still at the top of the list. Don't worry. I would never do that to you, Arthur. Okay? Yeah, he does that a lot. Yeah! <laughs> After a catchy song and a pretty sweet dance with Blanket, we're forced to make a choice. Do we want to play on easy mode or hard mode? And that's actually a pretty difficult decision because I hear if you die in Grouchland, you die in real life. I can neither confirm nor deny this, but that is the word going around the playground. So just be careful out there, everybody. No worries, guys. I've got this! Before we get into the rest of the game, Elmo takes us to his incredibly messy room to play some hide and seek with Blanket. Can you find the thing that Blanket is hiding behind? Alright, let's see here. It's gotta be... The lamp! Blanket isn't there! Ah, dang it! Alright, well, how about, um... The lamp again! No! No! Um, Freaking hard mode! Yay! Well, I'm sick of being patronized by Elmo over here who thinks he's so smart. Let's just head on over to the next screen already. Let's go play on Sesame Street! So we go outside to Sesame Street and play. It's a lot of fun to play. Oh. Seriously, Elmo, we know you like Blanket. Just get a freaking room already. Elmo's friend Zoe also wants to play with Blanket, but Elmo, being the exemplary children's role model that he is, refuses to let her hold it. But what starts off with Elmo being a little bit selfish very quickly turns into Zoe overstepping her boundaries a lot by trying to steal it. And in the ensuing madness, Blanket gets thrown down Grouch's trash can. Oh, no, Blanket! No, no, no! Oh, no! Elmo falls down through some floating garbage, landing directly in the middle of Grouchland, and somehow avoids breaking his legs in the process. It turns out that the evil Huxley, the same character from the movie Adventures of Elmo in Grouchland, has stolen Elmo's blanket, so he's gonna have to go all the way to his castle in order to get it back. This is the point where I started to realize that there's not much to this game. It basically plays as a book, and you can turn the page whenever you want to. Of course, there's also things you can do and click on, but it's all completely optional. There are a few things you can do, though, like this screen where you have to fix a minecart track so that Elmo can cross. Personally, I really wanted to make an incomplete track so that he could crash and die, but of course, you can't do that. Or can you? Ah! Dead. Wow. 
Then there's these Garbo guys who, despite being living, breathing beings made up solely of trash, are somehow completely uninteresting. But they do sing a song, and you all know how much I love songs. Sing with us! Beautiful, beautiful garbage! It's beautiful garbage! And you're cute. Well, I'm gonna leave now. Bye-bye. After a while, Elmo gets to mount Pick-A-Nose, which is actually what it's called in the movie, and has to perform many daring, dangerous jumps to make it to the top. Elmo has to climb this tall, giant, huge mountain. Who could even know whether he'll live or die? Then goes into Huxley's house, who's not even there, by the way, and is basically handed his blanket with virtually no opposition at all. He then heads back to Sesame Street so that Zoe can finally apologize for all the pain, trouble, and danger she put him through with her greedy and violent actions. Zoe, Elmo, sorry I got mad at you before about his blanket. It's okay, Elmo. I uh, excuse me, what was that? You understand? I will sue you! I will sue you, Zoe! I will spend all my money and resources to make sure you go to prison for the rest of your life! Have you ever thought about that maybe Blanket wasn't just a toy to me? He was my best friend. We do dances together, and, and, and you didn't even care about it! Think, think on, on that, Zoe, while you're rotting in prison. All right, well, that's enough of that. I've actually found quite a bit of Sesame Street games, and maybe we'll talk about some more of them at some point. And in the meantime, did you really think I couldn't find anything else super cool and amazing at the thrift store? Well, if you did, you're dead wrong, because the other day I found something super hype. And it was basically a steal, too, for the low, low price of $2.99 US dollars. I bought 1,000 hours of free America online internet. The best free dial-up money can buy. Get jealous. <laughs> hey, we didn't show the registration code on there, did we? I actually, I actually need this. The second game I have for you guys today is... <clears throat> Excuse me. Sonic's Schoolhouse. 2 plus 10 equals 12. 2 plus 10 equals 12. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals 12. We don't even need it. <laughs> I know a lot of you guys love seeing me talk about Sonic. I don't know why, because I don't like it. But I have a feeling that this isn't going to be a normal Sonic game anyway, so let's just get right into it. I'm Sonic. You sure are, buddy. You sure are. Well, this is probably one of the ugliest looking start menus I've ever seen, and to boot, it's also a little bit unnerving. I don't know if there's supposed to be music or not, but there isn't any playing on my version of Windows 98, so instead we're forced to silently scroll through various different animal player icons, some of which are definitely not helping the game feel any less creepy. <laughs> It also makes me wonder exactly what kind of sick individual would force their friend to play this with them. Because that's apparently a thing you can do. But no worries, the actual game, of course, is not actually as creepy as the main menu makes it seem like it'll be. Wait, there's two... There's two sinuses? Why is there two sinuses here? Why is there two sinus? Sinus! Well, I take it back. It is still kinda scary, but I don't care enough to make a joke about it. I'm way too distracted with all these sweet MS Paint pictures on the wall. Nice. 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 The point of this game is that it's not a game. You walk into rooms, look at chalkboards, and then walk around some more until you find the missing number or the letter that you need. Great. There's really not that much else to it. The hardest part of the game, by far, is trying to figure out where the heck you're supposed to go and what doors you've already completed. It's a literal maze, and all the numbers jumping up and down make it even more confusing. I feel like I could have easily included this on my top 10 trippiest video games list I did a while back. Other than answer the stupid chalkboard questions, all you can really do is go on field trips, which look like they'd at least be funny at first, but other than watching Sonic drive 500 miles per hour, the only thing you can do is learn. And that's dumb. Wait, hold on. What's this door here? I'm only just now noticing this. 
Get ready for a sonic adventure. Okay, well, that was a little bit terrifying. Sticking with the theme, I guess. But hey, at least we finally found the part of the game where we can have a real sonic adventure. I bet it's gonna be just like the Dreamcast game. I can't wait. Grab all the rings you need. Watch for Robotnik and his friends. Have fun. That was fun. Let's go back to school. All right, I'm done with this. You're gonna come back soon, right? No, probably never, actually. Well, that segment's over, so you know what that means. Time for another great Goodwill find. This time we have Creative Clips and Fonts, brought to you by Keepsakes. Do you need some assets for your project? Well, here's where you look, right in there into the box. There's Aloha. some on the back, some on the front. We all just need to make sure we thank Becky Higgins for all the amazing images you're seeing right now. Couldn't have done it without you, Becky. Send much love for me and the kids to you and yours. At the start of the video, I briefly mentioned early childhood memories. Well, there's one game that I have just the vaguest memory of playing when I was a kid. Or rather, I should say, I have the vaguest memory of not being all allowed to play it as a kid and instead watching my older brother play it because I was too young to read. But luckily, I've got that covered. I learned just how to do it last week. For the longest time, I tried to remember exactly what that game was called, but I never could. I even asked on Twitter a few times to no avail. All I remember was that you were some red spacesuited guy flying around on a jet bike or something. You know, that game. But after looking at this box, I realized that I had finally found it. Treasure Galaxy. Once upon a time, somewhere in the galaxy, there was a tiny fliff suspended in space like a small jewel. This tiny fliff, also known as Crystal City, is a happy kingdom filled with happy people as well as these little golden sundrop guys. Unfortunately, this guy over here named the, the Master, Master of, of Mischief. Mischief decides to launch a bunch of weird faced asteroids at it. I think the word mischief might be a bit too lenient of a descriptor for bombarding a city with giant face asteroids though, I'm sorry to say. I think it would be, uh, what's that word again? Oh yeah, terrorism. The master of terrorism. Maybe that's a bit too much for a kid's game though. During the deadly assault, I mean, uh, the mischief. TMT swoops in, steals all the queen's crystals, and hides them throughout the galaxy. So it's up to us, the super seeker, that's apparently what we're called by the way, to find them and bring them back. So you may be wondering, what exactly makes these crystal things so important? Well, there's a great reason, I assure you. I, the queen, do shall require the crystals, for I greatly enjoy looking upon them, as their shiny glow warms my heart, and I do so tire of my old trinkets and treasures. Quite the bore, really. I mean, the, uh, <coughs> the, uh, friendly sun drops depend on the shiny crystals? Do you keep up their sunny spirits? Yeah, yeah let's, just, let's just go with that. Well, I can only assume that we, as the official palace super seeker, enjoy nothing more than superbly seeking for things, so off we go. Ready to go? Use the mouse to move your scooter around the orbit. Now this is the part of the game that I remember watching my older brother play. Flying around on the space shooter and catching little star guys with yellow circle beams. I'm actually getting a little bit nostalgic just looking at this. Once you catch one, you play a little game where you solve the most basic math problems you could possibly think of. Such as, if eight pins equals eight presents and seven pins equals seven presents, how many presents does three pins equal? Uh... It's three! Good job, Super Seeker! You got it right! You've earned some Starbucks! Yes! <laughs> the ones you really want to catch, though, are the cool ones, because they don't just give you Starbucks, basically money, they give you the secret codes to the satellites that for whatever reason seem to contain the crystals that the Master of Mischief stole. I know what you're thinking, what is it that makes this star drop cool and this this one not cool. <laughs> well, it's obviously because the uncool ones don't have a giraffe neck. A neck like a giraffe. Once you have the codes, you can use them to open up the satellites and retrieve one of the crystals. The only other thing you can really do besides that is play some random games like moving small shapes into a larger shape or this calendar game. May 15. 
When you get enough crystals, you take them back to the queen, she puts them back into her chest, waves her wand around a little bit, and gives you a unicycle. Pretty sweet, I guess. Well, the game may not have been that much fun, it was made for three-year-olds, I guess, but it was a nice trip down memory lane, and I'm glad that I finally got to play it. It only took like 24 years. Finding a game like this is one of the reasons why I love going to thrift stores and yard sales in the first place. You never know what cool stuff you might find. And in celebration of the fifth episode of this little series, I just wanted to give a genuine shout out to you guys for not only watching these Good Bowl Games videos, but for watching all of the content that I put out. Making these videos is not only what I enjoy doing most, it also occupies most of my thoughts almost every day, pretty much constantly. In fact, I'm not sure I'll ever be able to accurately express just how much the support you give means to me. So instead, I'll just say this. We will always be. Together forever, the world seems fine. We never would ever leave you behind. Yeah! And you're cute. <clears throat> you guys want to play the Arthur board game with me? Arthur saves the planet, one step at a time. It's the last thing I found at the thrift store. Arthur and his friends are out to prove that no one is too young to make a difference in saving the environment. Can they make Elwood City a better place? You bet they can. Have fun while discovering a greener way of... Hey, where are you going? We gotta play, we gotta play the Arthur board game. No, 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 see, see, see. This exciting and original board game is based on Mark Brown's best-selling book and the award-winning team. Come on, guys. Oh, I get it. It's not that you guys don't want to play Arthur with me. You're all just too busy signing up for Blue Apron with the link in the description below. The first 100 people get their first box of meals for free. That's got to be it because the Arthur board game is a blast. Everybody knows that. Yes, this video is sponsored by Blue Apron, which is a service that brings three healthy, delicious meals straight to your door once a week. I'm actually a big fan of Blue Apron, and I've used it for a long time, way before they ever sponsored me, as evidenced by this large stack of recipes that I've amassed. As an introvert who works a lot and doesn't like leaving his house, Blue Apron is perfect. Not only are all their ingredients fresh, they deliver them right to your door every week. It takes out all the stress of planning your meals completely. In fact, they even pre-measure all the ingredients for each meal, which makes it extra convenient. One thing I've always struggled with is eating healthy, but Blue Apron makes it easy because not only does every meal have healthy ingredients like vegetables and fruit, they're also delicious and planned out by professional chefs. I dropped it. And if someone as incompetent as me can do it, you can too. Sign up with the link in the description below! Wow! Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. If you want to help me share this video around, then make sure you give it a like, a comment, and a favorite. It's much appreciated. Also, if you want to watch or rewatch the old Goodwill Games episodes, I'll leave the playlist right here for you. Or check out this song I did with Youngtown. Bye bye. We don't even need it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely scripted that one. <laughs>